All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition about the Truth About Your Health podcast, where we teach exhausted and burnt out adults the truth about their health so they can get their health back quickly. And what a privilege it is to work to talk to Dr. Joseph Anton today. He is the CEO and chairman of the board of El Nutra, a unique Nutri, uh, Nutritech company leading the food as medicine movement by applying cutting edge sciences and nutrition research and the first to uncover what humans should eat to live healthier longer, and second to help patients achieve better health outcomes. He is the chairman of the board at the Global Health Span Policy Institute and is a member of Forbes Business Developmental Council. So, Dr. Joseph, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for hosting me, Dr. Joel, and hopefully in the next 45 minutes, we'll change somebody's life. Yeah, well, I know you, I, I, we will. And I know you have your own personal story. And, and maybe let's take our listener through that so that they can identify with maybe what you how you got into what you got into. And then we could really talk about the ABCs and the XYZs of to fast or not to fast and why it's important in, in longevity. So maybe start with your story. Well, um, uh, thank you. I started as a, as a, I always had the passion to help patients. I wanted to become a physician, which is how I started my professor, professional career with. And I wanted to be a cardiologist. In doing my rotations, and I did those at, at Harvard at Mass General Hospital, I was like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm being taught to mainly diagnose, meet a patient, meet somebody after they're sick. So it was practicing sick care rather than health care. Then give them a diagnosis and then put them on different pills that they have to take for the rest of their life. So I felt that medicine has done a great job stabilizing us after we get sick, but I, have, but I didn't feel that it was curing most of these patients. And I definitely felt bad meeting them after the heart attack, after they get blood pressure, et cetera. And most importantly, I felt that I always had that question to my attendings. I was like, if, the, if this pill works, why do they have to refill it every month? Right? That, was, that was my biggest question. It's like, it, it's a subscription forever for your blood pressure pill. It's a subscription forever for your blood sugar pill. It's a subscription forever for your uh, cholesterol pill. In looking at that patient, like I was, it's, 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 it's not difficult to figure out what happened to him. He's getting older. So it's difficult for him to get the weight off. He has more responsibility as a father now or as a mother, and then he's financially stressed, and you got to talk about his lifestyle, have him go back to exercise, to eating healthy, to sleeping better, to, to cherish that love, that family love. And this is what today is lifestyle medicine that I'm cherishing so much and I'm, I'm a big part of. So I decided to leave medicine uh, after I graduated and go into health policy and public health um, with Harvard and Hopkins and and my goal was to reform healthcare systems to be more preventive and to adopt lifestyle medicine. And, and I hit a bump there. I, 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 I helped actually have a successful career helping you know, uh, tens of countries, international and ministries of health. But the bump was always that prevention was never productized. People love to consume. They don't love to hear the same thing over and over. Meaning we were telling people, and as a preventive tool to exercise, to eat healthy, to stop smoking. And everyone knows that. Like by today, there's no, it's no news to anyone. The challenge is on a micro timing daily, daily basis. If I see a burger in front of me and it fries and I'm hungry, I'm going to just be tempted, right? If I'm tired after working nine hours and, and or 12 hours or 16 hours, I'm not going to go to the gym late at night. So how can we turn healthy behavior into a product? And that, that became my goal because then they can consume health. We can all consume health and therefore stay healthy. Um, and this is where I decided to, um, to, to learn how to develop healthcare product and to launch them. And, um, and, um, and I joined the biotech industry and, and learned that. And then finally started looking for a true preventive, slash uh, uh, lifestyle medicine product that can keep us healthy if we're healthy longer and if we're sick, give an alternative to the pill industry. And, um, and nutrition became my passion because it's the only product we consume every day from the day we're born to the day we die. So it must carry the biggest 
the most important impact on our body, right? It's the only thing, if you can think about it, that we consume every day, every day of our life. And, and I felt that the power of nutrition should go beyond I lose weight or not, beyond I'm eating a gluten-free or a low carb, or it should be even healing. It should be a longevity track. And, um, and I was uh, blessed and lucky to meet uh, Professor Walter Longo. Many of your probably listeners have heard of that name. Walter is the leading you know, figure in nutrition and longevity. And he uses food as medicine in his research and fell in love with what he had, which is an approach, a pharmaceutical approach to nutrition. He, 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 was, he, he took the long route. He took 25 years to do lab trials, mice trials, human trials on food, which no one has in, in a sense of, you know, many companies or few companies would have, but in a sense of trying to induce disease remission, trying to help people live long and measure that rather than just build correlates or, or add some minerals or, or, or a, just a better ingredient. It was going for food formulations that can help people live healthy long or help them with their disease regression and being the first and becoming the first Buddhist medicine. So I fell in love with that mission. And then um, he is the head of the Longevity Institute at the University of Southern California. He kind of, he and USC spun off El Nutra and, and invited me to come and become a CEO of the company. And uh, it's, it's in this position that I'm talking to you today. Yeah, listen, I, there's so many bubbles that go off in my head that we could take sidetracks to and maybe part two and part three to the podcast. So I'll, I'll, I'll ask a question in a succinct way without going too down that rabbit hole. Was one of the reasons that you decided to leave medicine and go into uh, longevity and, and food as medicine and, and adopting the pharmaceutical approach to, to food was that that wasn't going to be a, a, a very short or a very, I guess, obstructed path or a path that wouldn't have worked in the allopathic model? Or do you feel that um, at some point that it's going to be embraced? I, I guess it's a hard question to ask because it, it, it's not, it, it's, it's a, um, it's, it's a, it's a tough question to take on in terms of there's a way of practicing medicine and it yeah. doesn't involve certain tools and certain adjunctive approaches. So let me ask you just sort of a, without going too deep into that, yeah. why did, yeah, did you, I don't know if you understand if there's a question in yeah. there or not. Yeah. No, I love answering. That was my, the core of my passion. Well, basically, if you think, if you think about the, the top four disease that, that kill 90% of us, 90% of us will die from either cardiovascular or diabetes, which is part of big cardiovascular, Cancer, Alzheimer's, and you know, autoimmune, they're not short-term killers, but these are the these are the four or five conditions that 90% of us will die from. Now, what medicine missed is that actually to a big extent, these conditions are related to lifestyle and aging. Medicine taught us. And I went to the best medical schools. Medicine taught us, oh, there's genetic predisposition, something goes wrong, and then you develop a disease. Well, if you have the APOE gene, you're still not going to have Alzheimer's age, at age 20. You're going to still have it at 75 and 80 and 85 and 90. If, you, if your mother and father had cardiovascular disease, you're not going to die from atrial fibrillation at age 18. You're going to still do how to get heart attack, say, but it's age 55, 70, etc. So, so yes, of course, genetics play a role. But, in, in, in that was, that's very clear in diabetes. You look at the pictures of our ancestors in the 50s and the 40s, and they, they were not obese. They were not dying out of diabetes at that time. So if it's genetics, why didn't they have diabetes? Why they were not obese right now? We, we look at and many of us, 73% of us are overweight, and a lot of still healthcare professions explain that with genetics, where their, parents, their grandparents were not overweight. Their grand-grandparents were super skinny. Look at the pictures of the U.S. villages and the U.S. cities back in, the, in 1920, 1940, 1960. You don't see fat people very rarely. So, 
So it became obvious to me that what medicine told us, oh, there's one pathway going wrong, cholesterol increase because there's a disease called hypercholesterolemia and it's genetics. Well, guess what? Eight out of 10 people with high cholesterol actually are overweight. It's not genetics. They were overweight. They're eating a health, unhealthy habit and don't exercise any longer. So it was clear that is definitely a big role for medicine, but that role should be 20 and 30% of the care. 60, 70% of the care is solvable by slowing down aging. And we're gonna talk a lot about that because that was my biggest aha moment. You know, even if we're safe, if the biggest, the biggest reason for you to have a heart attack and or a cancer and or a, a diabetes and or Alzheimer's is actually your age. And number two is your lifestyle. And then comes genetics and everything else. Yeah. So, uh, so it, it's clear that med, that there's a role for the pill industry and the, and the pharmaceutical, and, and, and I'm the big proponent of that. Uh, but it should not be 100% of sick care. It should be 10, 20, 30 percent max, and 60, 70, 80 percent of a new healthcare model should be built on lifestyle medicine meaning how can I slow down your biological age? Because this is how it can help you. Even if you're 60, if your inner age is 50, you just gain 10 extra years before you hit your first heart attack or before you hit your first Alzheimer's, et cetera. So how can I keep you healthier from the inside? And how can I help you with your lifestyle? Eat better, exercise, stress less, sleep better, and then, um, and then increase your social capital and the love around you. And that became my passion. So, so my big aha moment was that a big chunk of what's gonna end up killing us, one of these four diseases could be prevented or slowed down or even remit you know, by lifestyle medicine. My biggest example is diabetes. I love bringing up diabetes, right? So <laughs> diabetes, 90% of diabetes, it, you get it from overweight. There's type one that is probably autoimmune, a little bit of genetics, okay, that's a minority. And then you have the type two. And the biggest reason for type two is overweight. So if somebody comes in and, 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 and punches you on the head every two seconds and you have a headache, what's the solution? You say, stop punching me. If you go and exercise, over, over exercise, and you're exhausted, what's the solution? You say, give me a rest, stop the exercise. So if somebody comes in and overfeeds you and now you have diabetes, what's the so solution? Why this time it's not stop, stop eating or so that you, suddenly the solution is insulin and metformin, right? Why in this case, we don't take the trigger of the disease? And, and I see a lot of doctors and a lot of nutritionists saying, wow, you can reverse diabetes with food. I mean, that's, that's the reason that we have diabetes. The only solution, or, or the best solution, that, I don't want to be superlative, but the best solution for diabetes is by fasting and or eating healthy and or burning more the fat with exercise. That's the solution for diabetes. Now, giving somebody insulin, which by the way, pushes sugar, doesn't vanish. Sugar doesn't vanish from the blood. It goes to your cells. It gets stored into more fat. It increases more insulin resistance. And now you need more insulin. So most of the diabetic medicine we've had to today, they accelerate the disease. That's, that's, that's one of, that's, that's an important, you know, thing to realize, you know, God bless that industry. They're trying to do their best with what, what's given, but it's not, it's not, it's not the fault of the pharma, like most people say, nor the fault of the doctors is the fault of a system that has accepted to just pay when it's late and pay to just kick the ball forward. And I go back to health policy and public health, we should go back and push lifestyle medicine, which is happening today. A lot of reimbursement is coming for nutrition, for programs that, that really help people conduct a much better life. They came very late after the financial crisis in healthcare, but that's the way to move forward. And, um, and this is what became my passion is how can we create this new discipline called lifestyle medicine, give every physician, every nutritionist new tools to help with disease remission and regression, if somebody has cancer. I mean, can you imagine today, if God forbid, may God forbid, if, you have, if your wife gets diagnosed tomorrow with breast cancer, there's no food regimen that she can use to improve her chances of, re, of regressing from the disease. We never, we eat food every day. No one scientific company came and say what you should eat to, to help her remit 
from from her cancer. If you have Alzheimer's, you're like, good luck. There's no medicine for it. Sorry, your dad is old, and now he has Alzheimer's. Like, what what kind of answer is that? How can I feed his brain in a better way so that the normal cells overperform? So that the cells that started getting damaged, they try to rejuvenate and stay healthier. So we never respected food enough as part of the disease mitigation or regression or remission or cure. And this is what the passion and the mission of our company. We're called L Nutra. L is for longevity through nutrition. And we are we, we, we are proud to be the first nutri-tech company, like the biotech industry, with a nutri nutrition technology industry. We put a, we put evidence-based scientific um, you know, approach to discover what people should eat if they have cancer, what they should eat if they have Alzheimer's, what they should eat to regress and remit diabetes, and if they're healthy, what they should eat to stay healthy long. This is, this is exactly my passion and the, and the mission of our company. Yeah, I, I mean, kudos to you and, and great summary of that. Of what my is, is that I had the obstacles and you just redefine and, and embraced it and scanned out and to how to support a new movement for longevity medicine, sponsoring A4M groups where, where I met you, where you're educating doctors and ultimately in driving policy change through uh, leading by example and creating the, the protocols and the outcomes and forcing the traditional allopathic approach to take notice and take heed versus continuing to knock on the door in the vehicle that you're in and not making progress. So kudos for you for doing that. Um, I, I had the opportunity of meeting you at that A4M where you were offering a, a fasting certification. I, I was fascinated with the information. Um, I will say as a, as a traditional, uh, as a chiropractic trained physician, we, we learned nutrition and the importance of food and and lifestyle medicine in our curriculum so it's really nice to see the the allopathic model embrace that now and i'm excited to see where it's headed as far as i know we have a lot of ground to make up on on aging longevity health span as it relates to the people that that we work with and you you did, you painted the picture pretty well where the, the, the guy comes home after a nine hour day, he's got financial issues, not as, or, or stressors, not as of, uh, he is under constant stress. He's not out in the environment. He's not eating the best diet. He has that burger and French fries in front of him. And that I'm with, uh, identify as uh, HPA axis or an adrenal based fatigue issue where they've been told that they shouldn't moderate their their food or, or fast or, or go into time restricted eating windows or do long prolonged eating uh, because their blood sugar is unstable and they've got to eat multiple meals more frequently. So maybe we can get into the conversation of who's it for? Is it safe? Um, how do you go about doing it? What are all the different tools that I should be considering? And just you kind of being the expert that you are, kind of run with the ball now that you that we're going in this area. Yeah, thank you for for mentioning that. I mean, you know, we've uh, when I went to med school, it was it was in 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 at the same time in nutrition schools. It, it was the 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 um, the word on the street was eat five and six times a day, right? Small meals and frequent eating which which probably was was a disaster of a recommendation um and we see the results today you know obesity still increases and and uh, and this is for many reasons i mean the the the, the it, this is important it's important now to talk a little bit about nutrition and aging and in every time we eat especially the carbs you know the carbs increase insulin right the, the insulin Insulin gets secreted when you eat carbs because it wants to move, you know, carbs from the blood to the to the cells so that the cells use them. But it's a growth factor. Everything that says growth, it means it's a pro-aging. So it's it's you grow forward. We grow biologically forward. We don't grow backward with with insulin. Same thing. And this is very important here, is to talk about the role of protein as well because people think carbs are bad. Pro, everything related to protein is good. And that's not true. Proteins are like carbs. 
the odd pro-growth factor. These two, these two nutrients, they come to our body to, to nourish us and therefore we love them, we go forward, we, we grow when we have them. So when you eat insulin, insulin-like growth factor, IGF-1 increases. And, and it's not by chance that it's called insulin-like growth factor. So it's exactly like insulin. It pushes you to grow. So the more frequently you're eating, the more you're spiking your more frequently two growth factors, insulin and IGF, and the more you are growing forward, meaning you're aging. And biological aging, I mean, people have to start thinking about biological aging completely separate than your age. It doesn't matter today if you're 50 or 60 or 70. What matters is how old are you from the inside? What's your biological age? And that's, that's huge. And, and why is that huge? Because as we said, the four diseases that will kill us, diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular, and autoimmune, they actually, especially diabetes, cardiovascular, cancer, and neurodegenerative, they are actually perfectly age-related. You get your first heart attack at a later stage in, in life, you get your Alzheimer's and dementia later stage of your life. And most cancers, some of the cancers younger, we can talk about why uh, the stimuli there. But in most cases, all these diseases and diabetes you get at a later stage of life. So if there's the best gift I can give you today to stay healthy long and to add few years to your, few healthy years to your life is to delay or reverse your biological age. And this is why we move to fasting, because this is one of the ways to do that versus eating all the time. Every time you eat, and, and guess who does religiously eat six times a day? It's the bodybuilders today, right? Why? Because they have to grow, talking again, grow their muscle. And bodybuilders eat very high meat, uh, protein, you know, uh, concentrations within every meal, and they eat six times a day. And look what happens. Most bodybuilders actually lose around five to 10 years of their life. You, have you ever seen a centenarian, somebody who's 100 years and above, and said, I, was, I used to be a bodybuilder, or I used to be Mr. Olympia? Unfortunately, we, lo we lost Ronnie Coleman at age 55. We lose many of the, of the big giants or the big ones, Andrew the Giant, who had, they actually have an overstimula natural overstimulation of IGF or growth hormone. So either by eating frequently per day or by having a disease that secretes high IGF or growth hormone, both these people, athletes and people with acromegaly, they actually have 10 years less on average in their lifespan. So this proves what I'm saying is that the more you spike insulin and IGF, the more you're aging, the more you're aging, the faster. So you'll be 60 chronologically, but you're 70 biologically, therefore you're gonna hit cancer, you're gonna hit Alzheimer's, you're gonna hit diabetes, and this is how you're gonna induce shortevity rather than longevity. So this is critical for everyone today. We did say, hopefully we're gonna change somebody's life. Eating frequently every day probably is not a longevity, a healthy longevity matter. Um, the opposite, we are, one, one of the, we're gonna bring a lot of information today, but one, if, if I want one info to kind of be transmitted to your listeners is that always think about a natural harmonized way of eating and, and lifestyle. Because we, at the end of the day, we as humans lived on planet Earth for hundreds of thousands of years. And we were cultured, right? We evolved with nature. And nature culture, cultures us. And why, we, why we, we, we started developing chronic disease fast in the last 40, 50 years? Because we deviated from nature. We started eating more frequently than we can handle. We started exercising less than we can handle. We started creating stresses of living in the cities and technology, etc. We started, like, we started expressing less love and social capital because we're away from our families. We're getting divorced fast. So once we deviated from this harmonized way of how we used to live is when we started developing a lot of or accelerating aging and these chronic diseases. So every time somebody preaches you, because every day you go on YouTube, there's 600 theories about what you should eat, how you should exercise, which is it keto, is it, is it uh, all meat diet? Always go back and say no to all of them. Say, I'm going to go back and eat what I'm supposed to eat. We as humans lived around rivers all our life. Forget about the cavemen. We were slept in a cave so that we, we don't get bit by an animal, but there's no food nor water in the cave. We lived around rivers. Why? Because river is the water you can drink. And without drinking water, <laughs> that, that was essential. 
And there were trees and grass, so there were fruits and vegetables. And this is what we ate, plant-based diet. It was easy to fish. Fish is the only animal that cannot fly or run away, or it was very easy to fish. So we were having a pescatarian diet. We were eating a lot of plant-based food, rich in, in legumes and, fruit, and fruits. And then we were eating fish as the main source of protein. Then we developed hunting skills and we started adding some red meat. So the longevity diet, if you want to eat a healthy diet for your longevity, it's literally a pescatarian slash flexitarian, some red meat. And guess what? When the sun was down, we would sleep. There was no TV, no Uber Eats. So we were not eating overnight. Up until the morning, when we were up, if we have some food left over, so it would be light breakfast. If not, we'd go and search for food. So that 12 hours of fasting, overnight fasting, was very important. It, we call it the circadian fasting, right? Our our, it's not just our brain that needs to sleep, but also our gut, every organ in the body should not be in digestion and, 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 and absorbing sugar and, and protein during the night and going into fat. We should have an early meal and then sleep and stay 12 hours, 13 hours with no food. That's the longevity diet. 12 days, 12 hours intermittent fasting, pescatarian and a little bit of meat which makes it, you know, flexitarian. If a little bit more, it will make it Mediterranean. And that's a harmonized way to eat. To me, anything else is an artificial imposition to your body. Now, you might accept it if you have a health condition. So if you tell me, hey, I have diabetes, my first, first concern is not to live an extra 20 years in 20 years. My first concern is today to reverse diabetes. Yeah, go on a low-carb diet, try ketogenic a little bit, try the fasting mimicking diet. So then... You have interventions that are dealing with a short-term purpose. But if you're healthy, you want to live healthy long, intermittent fasting plus a longevity diet that I described is the right formulation for that. It's not eating six or eight times a day. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great uh, overview of where we got to. And I would add the, the light bulb as well, right? Because that really messed up our circadian rhythm uh, and extended the seasons. And also just the, the, the processing and the adulteration of our food quality on top of all of that. So we have all these hurdles and obstacles that our growth factor environmental uh, stimuli on top of the food we eat and makes it even more important to to balance the the yin with the yang and that's where cleansing autophagy clearing out removing um, and being able to harness the way inborn uh, physiology has been has been evolving through the millennia so so I know there's a lot so I guess with the fasting mimicking diet, maybe you can talk about the different tools that um, that El Nutra teaches and and the utility or the value in each of them, and and help someone that's listening to this say, okay, I I, I can I I can accept what you're telling me. How how do I go about doing this? Yeah. So we as a company we we invested heavily into two tracks: the longevity diet that we just described, meaning eating a clean healthy longevity diet we call it nutrition for longevity it's a full company under us um and um and nutrition for longevity would deliver the food to you one of the cleanest food we even own you know our farms and it's a longevity formulation and it follows the american heart and american diabetes association food so this is food for every day that we can send to your home and now medicare and medicare gave us a reimbursement code to be one of the first food as medicine companies. And within the span of five months, we have 43 health insurances that signed us to pay for our food as medicine. So that's, that's a huge, if you want, step forward for us into showing the world that we know how to formulate food that is healthy for you and payers are willing to pay for it. But the landmark discovery that we are known for is the fasting and the fasting mimicking technology. And why is that so? So, so 25 years ago, our, our founder, Professor Walter Longo, I recommend here, you know, if you, if you, if you guys want to buy his book, which describes what I'm going to talk about, it's called The Longevity Diet, um, 2018 Amazon bestseller, amazing book. But our founder discovered it at USC, he's the head of the Longevity Institute at University of Southern California. So basically he and USC discovered that 
there's two types of fasting. There's the fasting that I talked about, 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours, which is, it creates a calorie deficit in the body and therefore you lose weight, right? Or you balance your weight. If you fast for 12 hours, you're balancing. You eat over the day, during the day, you kind of, you don't eat during the night. So, you know, f- calories in, calories spent, you're equal, it's a good balance. If you go for 16 hours, maybe you're losing a little bit more calories if you have some weight, so you go a little bit for that. But it's still, it's a weight balancing, it's a calorie ba- balancing, intermittent fasting is a calorie balancing act. What University of Southern California and now 18 other universities are researching is what happens if you go longer? What happens if you fast for two days, three days, four days, five days? And they discovered something very important, which is once you cross day two, because day one and day two, you have enough fat in your body to compensate for the deficit. The liver can help with neoglucogenesis. You have glycogen in the muscle. So there's, there's enough money in the bank, credit card that you can use in the first two days with, you know, using that analogy. Once you cross day two, the body is telling the cells, hey, I'm actually going bankrupt. I could not now break enough fat for you into ketones. I can, you know, glycogen is getting depleted and the liver reserve are being, you know, used. So now we're in a crisis mode, which happens for most people, not at 16 hours like they think, not at 18 hours, but actually after two days of fasting. And this is what we call prolonged fast. And the body tells the cells, hey, you got to start burning your intracellular sources of energy, organelles, debris, and start to rejuvenate. We have to survive. In order to survive, we have to be at our optimum. And this is what's called autophagy, self-eat and self-renewal. And the, the Japanese you know, uh, 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 researcher who discovered that, that process or described it, not discovered, but described it in the biochemical formulation, won the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2016 for it. So it's, it's a new chapter of fasting, which says if you fast for over two or three days, now it's not only you're losing weight, which is great, and you're improving your blood pressure and everything that happens there metabolically, but you're engaging your cells and asking them to rejuvenate to survive the fast. This is where we come. We were like, wow, this is a miracle of biology. The body can rejuvenate its own cells, which basically is a good healthy aging uh, or from a biological age standpoint, it's an amazing way that the body is fixing its own cells, right? It's like if you're in a Formula One car race and, and all the longevity lifestyle you can do is to slow down the car. But if you take a pit stop, all the mechanics come in, they turn the wheels, they add more gas and oil and, and you rejuvenate it. And so for the first time, we have discovered the biological rejuvenation in then we were like, okay, if you're healthy, this might help you maybe stay healthy long. But if you're sick, would the body tolerate that you're diabetic when you're fasting? Would your body tolerate that you have cancer when you're fasting? Or the body would fight these diseases because it's a crisis mode. And the body is telling the cells, hey, go fix yourself. And so we were very, very interested in starting to test fasting on disease remission. And we started doing this with very positive results in mice. Then we went in humans, striking results in mice. You know, cancer rates, cancer survivor, uh, cancer cure rates in mice went to over 90%. Diabetes reversal in mice. So we went to humans and nobody can fast for three, four, five days. It was very difficult. Both USC and Mayo Clinic together could not recruit people to fast for four days. And it was a cancer drop. And therefore, the National Institute of Health stepped in and donated millions of dollars to us and to USC in order to develop the fasting mimicking diet, meaning can you nourish these patients? Can you develop a diet that people can eat, but the diet does not spike? Remember, insulin and IGF, the the body recognizes food and goes off fasting when insulin is high and IGF is high. Can you develop a very special food formula that you can eat. Insulin doesn't spike, IGF doesn't spike. So um, from the endocrine perspective, from the total body perspective, the body is not sending signals of food. And then at the cellular level, can you develop that nutrition to go around the main 
cells, the sensors, the food sensors of the cell, the PKA, the RAS, and the TOR pathways. These three pathways tell the cell there's food. Can you go around these pathways? Can you not trigger them enough? So, so the concept of fasting with food or the fasting mimicking diet is a concept where you're eating, but physiologically at the cellular level, the cells are not recognizing the food. Therefore, the pressure on the cell is still on. Therefore, the cells practice autophagy and rejuvenation. And therefore, we give you the benefits of fasting while you're eating, while you're eating food. And that 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 is probably one of the biggest discovery of, of, of nutrition in this century. And uh, and we were able to file over 300 patents globally on this discovery. Um, and uh, we have over 40 patents fully issued on multiple health conditions with the fasting mimicking nutrition. Yeah, it's awesome. So just being the nerd that I am, as far as how do we know with the research that those nutrigen sensing pathways with the with the food that you you give your your research uh, participants is actually not stimulating those three pathways. What are the objective ways to determine that that's happening? So uh, three three ways. We number one, you measure the fasting. So so when you uh, the fasting for our audience, the most frequent regimen that we have with the fasting mimicking diet is a five day, uh, you know, fasting with food nutrition. And, and, uh, and a lot of people would recognize probably the Prolon brand, which is the product that we launched six years ago. It's a five day food that you get. And, um, and you eat your food for five days and your body would be fasting for five days. So how did we test that Prolon mimics fasting? Um, number one, we test IGF, IGFBP, insulin and insulin secretion because if you can get the same rates as water fast and keep those in mitigation you know that your body is not recognizing the food then we test ketone bodies showing that ketone bodies keep growing up and then we test uh, a flux of autophagy and we test also um i don't want to mention this as a claim but we we are interested and we did some sub cohort testing of even a push on the stem cells which is a very actually only happens at a very advanced stage of fasting where sometimes the body actually pushes younger cells so i don't want to talk in detail about this we're still in research about it but that's another avenue that we're exploring in here so these are the ways exactly like water fasting we measure ketones increase igfvp igf insulin and and, and autophagy flux right okay and so as far as it makes perfect sense because if we understand how important the 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 growth like factors are on on aging and being able to harness the ability to detox and get into autophagy or clear out debris requires you to fast but who on earth is going to be able to do it um, and then being able to formulate a, um, a regimen where you're still eating. And I did it actually uh, for the first time a couple of weeks ago, and I did fine with it. And it was, uh, it, was, it was great. I guess one of the side questions I would ask you is, which you probably weren't uh, prepared for, is I know there's a, a, a psychological connection with food, I, I really feel. So what have you found in terms of the feedback that with each success of fast, because I'm set to do mine next week, and I feel that there was a couple ahas for myself where I realized that, oh my gosh, when I wake up in the morning, I'm just going to crush whatever I eat because I'm so hungry. I need to eat or psychologically, my wife's cooking and I can smell it and I'm already on the foods that I'm allowed to have. I already had my meal for the evening. Um, I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm just going to, I'm going to break it. I'm going to eat whatever I want. And I wake up in the morning, I'm not hungry. Right. Yeah. Or I even got to day five and I really didn't need the first bar in the morning. I just did it because I did it. And there was a couple of aha uh -huh. is like oh there's a there's a certain emotional psychological yeah. connection so maybe talk a little bit about that i know we weren't really prepared to talk about that but that was one of my own ahas uh -huh that i have and where where does that come in or do, do you guys harness that as as educational information for people that are wanting to to get some longevity and improvements with doing something like this yeah what, what you just described is the number one benefit that people talk about when they do prolong 
is changing their relationship with food and creating this metabolic flexibility, right? So, and this is what we talked about before the two days and after the day. So what you described, your hunger, your first, your, the pain. So the first day is fine. You're under 1,100 calories. The second day becomes difficult. You're depleting your, your, your liver, your glycogen, your, uh, your fat. And day three is the most difficult day. Um, you're like, hey, I'm going to just stop this, right? Because this is where the crisis is now telling the cells, hey, it's, it's pushing ketone secretion, but it's telling the cells you should start doing autophagy. Day four, you're like, shit, something changed in my body. I'm, I'm becoming more resistant to all this. And number and day five, you're like, I don't even need to eat. And I feel euphoric and I feel full of energy and I had the best sleep of my life. And I feel so autonomous. And this is where you're cruising on ketones and on autophagy and on uh, cells using their intracellular energy and rejuvenating. And this is where you feel really, really strong. Now day six, you go and you go back to your food, more protein coming to your body, more carbs. You're feeding these cells that are being renewed and you feel on day six, seven, eight, like the best three days of your life. You feel like something happened to my body. I'm renewed, I have better mental clarity, the brain fog, my performance, my relationship with food. I don't need a pizza, a big pizza. I don't need a late night snack. And that journey of transformation is like you said, is physical, emotional, and even, even mental. And it's very important. The first cycle is the, is the most difficult one when you do the first prolong box because for 99% of us, it's the first time ever we're going to we're going to move from a carb consuming body to a to a ketone consuming body, right? We it's like going to the gym for the first time or playing a big basketball game after being off the court for three months. You're going to feel the pain of it. The next week you go there, you you feel much less pain, and then afterwards there's no pain. So your next prolong box would be much easier because your body learned at least once how to move from carbs to ketones and you understand the journey. And then the third one is much easier and easier and easier. I've, I've done over 20 now. And for me, it's like a very, a metabolically very flexible. So I switch much easier than other people and it's still less of a painful journey for me. But it's always good this first time to feel like, wow, I can live on much less food. My brain... I, I never felt my brain was so locked and foggy in the clarity and the performance. And once you unlock this new horizon and you feel the rejuvenation, um, it, it's powerful. The fasting impacts every cell of your body. We just finished a clinical trial on skin. We're showing the benefits of Prolon on skin glowness, skin radiance, skin. So it's the first nutrition that's showing you in, in, in the five days, and, and we also did three cycles, so in 15 days, we, we, you do prolong just once a month. It's just five days a month. That we need to clarify this for our audience. This is not a diet for every day. This is just five days a month. And you can do it even you know, once every quarter. So just three times a month, four, uh, three times a year or four times a year. That's all what you need. This is the first time probably a CEO telling you, don't do my diet every week or, every, or subscribe so that you get it every week. It's three times a year. Now, if you're overweight, um, you know, and, 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 and is more weight. So you can do it four times or more. But all what I'm asking people is it's, it's like the, the, the car racing. You take the pit stop twice in a race. You don't take it every two minutes or every two laps. And fasting is the same thing. You need a deeper fast, a prolonged fast with prolonged probably two, three, four times a year. And that's it. It's a cellular rejuvenation exercise. It keeps you metabolically flexible. It takes you to that pit stop. The mechanics come. They fix what they need to fix, and they set you back, you know, stronger and and and, and better into the race. Yeah, no, it's great, and you have a, a new relationship with food. And I think even some of the other invisible benefits is you're resetting some of the the microbiome uh, diversity, or you're you're culling the herd, if you will, and you're you're strengthening up the the mitochondrial health or your body's ability to to make energy more effectively. As far as I know, that you also with the with the certification course, which you are very. Uh, uh, objective about it and and being able to present okay there's there's a, a variations in the way that we do this so some people might be saying well i do a a 168 
or I do a, a five, two, where there's two days of the week where I don't do any food whatsoever, or I do one or two days, or there's the prolonged uh, fast with a fasting mimicking diet. So can you speak about, uh, are they, are, are they, you, are they synonymous or like, is, is one the same as the other, or is there benefit to doing one and having different tools in your toolkit? Um, I, I guess from a personal standpoint and a company standpoint, what are, what are you, what is the company suggesting or, or the education that you train to have as many tools in the toolkit? Well, I'd like to get your feedback on that. No, I think to re-clarify, I think you should do prolong uh, three times a year again. Uh, you can do it two to three if you have uh, a health or a weight reason you can do more frequently. But I'm, I'm, this is, don't take this as prescriptive because each person is different and I cannot generalize to everyone. I personally do it four times a year. And then a lot of people say what to do in between, right? You inspired me. The five days of roll on there, they're long enough to induce a change and they're short enough for everyone to complete and be inspired and say what to do next. And some people, they just want to eat healthy after. That's the longevity diet. This is our nutrition for longevity as well. We created a full pipeline of healthy nutrition that you can deliver at your door called nutrition for longevity. This is the one that we talked about that now Medicare, Medicaid, and 43 insurances are reimbursing. If you want to continue with fasting, you can do intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is either 16 hours a day, 12 to 16. We recommend 12 if you don't want to use any food. If you want to go all the way to 16, we do have a fast bar. If you want to eat a bar in the morning, it is uh, 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 clinically tested to be equal to water fast. And if you want to read that article, we published it in Nutrients, one of the top nutrition journal about the fast bar that you can eat in the morning and your body doesn't even know you're eating. So you would have the same ketones and the same blood sugar as a water fast. And why we developed the fast bar? Because... We understand the folks who want to go on 16 hours of fast from the weight standpoint and the calorie balance standpoint. But remember that your brain is without food for 16 hours, your heart that needs to pump your kidneys. So there are essential organs that have to function. And probably this is why you lose the weight because there's a high calorie demand in the morning. You're going to work, you're thinking, you're working, your muscle is moving. So when you skip breakfast, of course you lose a little bit of weight and you feel that hunger binge after. The fast bar is there to keep nourish your essential organs and to, to induce less of a binge eating afterwards. A lot of the trials on the 16 hours of fasting, they're not very conclusive because a lot of people stay 16 hours and then they go and they binge eat and they binge eat actually and they eat late at night and that, that over counterbalance the positive effect. So the fast bar is there to help. And then for those that you talked about who want to do a, a day of fast, some people practice the 5-2, meaning out of the seven days a week, they do five days of normal eating and two days of fasting. Same argument, you know, we're not big proponent of water fast because you don't want to deplete the essential organs of the body. So we have a product called the Prolon Reset that you can consume. It's food that you eat the entire day during your fasting days, and it nourishes your organs while keeping the cells in the fasting mode. And that's the entire purpose of our company. And again, we were a water fasting company. The National Institute of Health and the University of Southern California helped us to develop the fasting mimicking technology, which is helping people go on a longer fast. You want to do 16 hours? Okay, eat something though. You want to do one day of fast? Eat something because you don't want to deplete your essential organs. Now you want to do the most important, the five days fast, which is a rejuvenative fast. All the other fasts are more to lose weight or, or for metabolic health, which is great. Uh, but if you want to have the cells participate and rejuvenate, which is probably the big gold standard of, of, of fasting, definitely you need to do the fasting and the keen diet to do it in a safe and compliant way over the five days period. Yeah, I agree. I think that with the studies that are showing 88% of the people are metabolically unhealthy. And I explain to people that you're not, combining the food you eat and the air you breathe to produce ATP and water. And you're, you're not using oxygen for you, you're using oxygen against you. And so many people have spent so much money, they spend so much time uh, on their own, they go from doctor to doctor, and they have every Santa Claus bag of supplements in their in their pantry. 
And they look at me and they say, well, what are you going to tell me that I already haven't done? And I, and I pretty much am a hundred, well, 99% certain they haven't done this. And it's a tool that they need to do. If you think about how our body has been engineered over, like you've pointed out over the millennia to have feast and famine and to, to be able to realize that that is, is a, a therapeutic way for, or just a way that our body has been engineered for, for longevity. So kudos for, for you for, for doing this. And, and thank you for your time for, for being here. As far as it's exciting for me to hear about the uh, nutritional um, for longevity, especially with the third parties coming on board, because I think that's the, the momentum that we want to see where they're incentivized to give people uh, support for longevity and realizing that that's a win-win where their premiums can, can go down because they're not paying out so much money. And they're pay I thought that something like that at some point has to happen for us to have policy changes. And I, I can see where your, your, your policy of public health have, has come into play and how you're monetizing in terms of approaching it from a pharmaceutical approach. So I, I really appreciate everything that you, you've done and you continue to do. Uh, before I get to my last question, what forecasting with the, the company and El Nutra, what, what do you see in terms of additional health span? Because that's the term now. It's like, we don't want to just increase your longevity. We want to increase your, your healthy longevity. Um, where, where do you see uh, El Nutra maybe having tangential um, other types of information and or services or products to to align with that just as a curiosity well the, the most exciting for me is coming next which is end of this year we're going to launch our diabetes remission and regression program it's a program that is coordinated between nutritionists our fasting mimicking nutrition and nutrition for longevity and uh, we just published last week an article on diabetic kidney rejuvenation where we just finished a trial on diabetes remission and regression. So we're putting those together and we're going to launch a diabetes remission and regression program driven by nutrition, which is amazing for us. Again, diabetes is my passion. Diabetes and cancer are my passion. And I couldn't believe that there's no nutritional product that is here to help people with diabetes. Why the disease is a nutrition disease, a nutritional disease up to 80% of the time. And, and then cancer was always fascinated that if you have cancer, you say, well, you gotta do chemotherapy or hormone therapy or immune therapy and that's it. And how about nutrition? Uh, how about a nutrition? Oh yeah, you eat healthy. And yeah, if you wanna exercise, exercise a little bit. That's, that's not a, this is not what medicine should be about. Medicine should be about, well, you have this type of cancer, you should eat this type of food to increase your chances better outcome. And, uh, and we've published four articles on cancer uh, with the fasting mimicking technology last year. And three of them are in Nature, the number one science journal of the world. So we are thinking next year about launching a program, a nutrition for cancer program as well, followed after that a nutrition for autoimmune, for autoimmune as well. So pretty exciting next 12 months for us. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna, all these 25 years of clinical trials, they, they, we're gonna harvest their results and launch nutritional program to help people with certain health conditions. Oh, it's great. And I think that was one of my big takeaways from the A4M in that I, as the way I was trained, I was already familiar with a lot of the, what I almost assumed to be common sense information, right? Like in terms of natural approaches with food and lifestyle. Um, but what's really nice is, the, the way that it's been approached from validating through scientific studies and approaching it like the pharmaceutical model and ultimately hoping that that impacts the way that healthcare is, is practiced and, and being able to empower people to get their health back. Because where we're headed now, if we don't have someone to intervene with the tidal wave of tsunami of what's going to happen with the diabetes uh, trajectory if we don't stand in now it's going to be very crippling so it's it's very timely thank you for for doing this uh, i always have a question at the end knowing what you know now about health and you really did follow your passion it's not like you just sort of spun your wheels for many years and were frustrated you saw the writing on the wall um you're a forward thinker um is there anything that you would have 
done differently knowing what you know now maybe for your own health or a loved one or just the 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 culture in general um, around healthcare and I mean it's a lot proven in your product but anything else that we we didn't talk about that you wish you would have known sooner um, I think yes I think the notion of the notion of biological age and the notion of aging from food is something that I only discovered like 10 years ago for me food was you know mostly calories and lose weight gain weight muscle, if you want to eat more protein, etc. I never thought about food as an accelerator or decelerator of my biological age. And I never thought about my biological age being the most important determinant of which of, of, of my death actually through either cancer or Alzheimer's or diabetes or cardiovascular disease. When I went to med school, we treat each one of these diseases as fully separate. We have different specialties. We have different tracks. We think each one is a complete different system, different etiology, different treat. Like it was never, I never learned in, in allopathic medicine that it's all about aging and biological age and, it's, and nutrition is a big part of that. And, and how to use all this to increase my chances to stay healthy long rather than just focus on, okay, if you're sick with this, if, if you have a cardiovascular issue, which pill you would take. I feel this should be the last resource and, and there's definitely a big role for, for current medicine to play. And again, it's not the full role though. We got to bring longevity medicine and lifestyle medicine to it. Yeah, I mean, that it's great. And I, I, I foresee some obstacles along the way, but at the end of the day, I think the truth rises to the top when you circumvent it and you empower people with what you're doing, which is, which is amazing. Um, one of the things, going back to the bodybuilder, I actually didn't know Ronnie Coleman had died. Thank you for, for telling me. I didn't know that. But what I was going to say is I, I do feel that they were the original biohackers in the sense that they understood periodization, growth, and, and cutting. They just took it too far. But I think that th that our that a lot of the, the tenants in fasting mimicking from refueling, from growth factors, depending on where you are in the life cycle, when you're wanting to build and, and strengthen and load the bone and, and build mineral density to when you're older and you're, you, you need to put more emphasis on cleansing and clearing out. But if you think about the, the, the dineral or the circadian rhythm, you think about the, the monthly rhythm, you think about the seasonal rhythm, and you think about just how we go through um, plenty and we go through lack, our body's really engineered for that. And, and it's not just one magic pill to, to fix the ill. And it's not just set it and forget it either. It's a lot of moving parts and realizing that our body's amazing. We have to give it both the yin and the yang so that it can be able to function at, at full capacity. And I just want to thank you for taking the time um, and, and being here today. Um, I, I will post links to be able to where they can access getting some of these, these products that, um, that you're promoting. And I'm excited to see what um, El Nutra has in store um, with the clinical trials of diabetes and cancer. Um, any, any last um, words of wisdom that you can share with our listener? Um, again, uh, think about the five pillars of staying healthy long, the health plan pillars, nutrition, exercise, stress, sleep, and probably the one that competes and number one most impactful with nutrition is the social capital. Receiving and giving love, your family, your serenity, your yoga, your meditation, your self-love, your self-appreciation, your pur purposefulness. All these, it seems they can't equal to nutrition and they compete as the best way to live healthy long. We study people who live 100 and beyond the centenarians. And guess what? Some of them eat healthy, some of them don't. Some of them smoke, drink, eat bacon, and what they all have is they live in their village, they're happy with their family, and they sm have a big smile every day of their life. So what I wish everyone here today is hopefully you learned a couple of things that are going to change your life. And the third thing that's going to change your life is keep that smile and that optimism and purposefulness. Um, it's going to bring you positive energy and, and, and healthy longevity.
Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for, for that last little piece. Um, I appreciate uh, your time and um, I look forward to probably part two somewhere down the road. Um, and I wish you nothing but future success and endeavors with everything that you're doing. Thank you very, very much. Bye-bye.